Hey smart people, Toby Salami here. In this video, I'm going to show you just how you can create a number of users all at once by clicking a single button. Just one button, uploading a CSV file, and you have a bunch of users, hundreds or even thousands of users created all at once. Let me show you by demonstrating it right now. Inside of this tutorial, you're gonna learn how to create a form for uploading the CSV. You're going to learn how to link that form to an automation tool. You're also going to learn how to bulk create those users of whatever number all at once. And let me show you a simple example. Let's drag in a CSV file carrying a list of users. And we're going to click on create users. But before we do that, let me show you a list of users I already have inside of here. We have just five users and none of them are subscribers. So let's create them. Let's come back inside of the front end here and let's click on create users. This carries a list of 30 users. As you can see here, it says users created. Let's see if that actually is true. What we're gonna do now is come back inside of our list of users here, and we want to refresh this list. Let's click on refresh. And what we have here is 35 users, 30 new subscribers added to the list, all of whom have a username, a password, an email address, and a role as subscriber all from uploading a single CSV file. Do you want to learn how to do that? Even if you don't want to, I assure you, you're going to learn something brand new. My name is Toby Salami, and in order for us to get started, I need you to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button too, so that you get notified of videos like this, which I release every single week. Shall we start now with the plugins? Inside our list of plugins, we have BitFlows Pro, which you can get the license for in the description below. If you want to get all of the Bit apps at once, at one single cost, there's a bundle plan currently going on, and you can get it at 60% off all of the Bit apps at one single cost. Grab your licenses with the link in the description below. Let's move ahead now to the rest of the setup. As you can see here, I have my page builder elemental installed, but of course you can make use of any page builder of your choice. The page builder you have here really has no bearing on this tutorial. We also have jet phone builder. It's my phone builder of choice for this particular tutorial, but keep in mind, you can make use of any other phone builder of your choice to achieve the exact same thing. So let's start now by building out our flow. The flow here is simple. We're just going to collect the list of all of the users from the CSV and then go ahead to automate the creation of all of the users. Let's do just that. We're going to come inside of BitFlows right now. You can find it on the left hand side right here inside of the dashboard. Let's create a new flow and we can call this bulk create users. That's fine. We can click on blank. Blank is fine. We click on create. Now, when we create a new flow, the first thing we want to do is use a trigger. And what is a trigger? The trigger is just something that begins a string of actions. So let's select a trigger here. What trigger do we want to use? We want to use the webhook trigger. And what is that? It's just a simple URL that's going to be generated by BitFlows. And then you can use a form builder like BitForm or JetForm Builder or any other form builder that supports webhooks to then send the CSV file right inside of here. So let's add a new webhook. Let's just call that webhook collect CSV or whatever else we want to call that. It's entirely your choice. Click on save. We have our webhook created and we have a callback URL which we can make use of here. Now let's begin to create our form. The form we want to create is a simple form. All it does is just collect the CSV file and send it to the webhook. So let's toggle off the save form records default option here and start from scratch. We don't need this hidden field, so we're gonna delete that. We also don't need this text field, so we're also going to delete that. All we need inside of here is a simple media field to be able to collect the CSV. So media field, we drag that right inside of here. Let's give this form a title. We're going to say create users. Okay. Now for the media field, we're just going to call that CSV of users. Something like that is okay. Now we could, if we wanted to just change the form submit button here to something that makes sense. For example, create users. That's fine. 
Let's come back inside of JetForm here and let's just scroll all the way down where we have the form submitted successfully message. We can change that to users created, something like that. It's fine. All right. Now let's go up ahead and add a new post submit action, which is just the action or string of actions that happen after this form is submitted. In this case, we just need to call a webhook, which we already have the URL for, right? So let's come back inside of here and copy that webhook URL. We're going to come back inside of the form and add the webhook URL right here. Once we're done, we click on update. Now we're done creating this form. If we want to, we can add some specific things such as ensuring that this particular form field is required before it's submitted or that the only kind of file that can be collected from here is a CSV, which you can do by just coming inside of the block and you can come down here and say, well, the kind of file you're going to allow here is CSV, for example, and you click on that and it only collects the CSV with that. Those kind of stuff, you can definitely drill things down, make sure it's as tight as possible, but that's not the focus of this tutorial. We want to make sure that we're able to bulk create users. So let's do just that. Let's publish this form. And once we have this form published, we're going to go right into the edit page where we're going to place this form on the page that's needed. So let's come inside of the edit page right here. And inside of here, we want to put the form right inside of here. Let me drag this out, click delete. Then right here, we want to type in form and bring that jet form right there. But of course, we need to refresh this page. Because of course we created the form after this page was already open. So let's just refresh so we can grab the form called create users. We want to put it right inside of the page there. Let's just open the front end right here so we can have it ready to use. Okay. Now that we have the elemental page loaded, let's just select the form, come down here, select create users, and we are very good to go. We care very little about the design of this form. All we care about is the functionality for now. So let's refresh it in the front end to see what we have so far. And here is what we have. We have CSV of users and we have a form field ready to collect the CSV file. Okay, now that we're done with this, let's just create a simple CSV that we can then make use of. Let's come inside of list of users right here. We have a simple Google Docs spreadsheet here ready to be used. Well, there is nothing inside of it. So let's just call this a new list of users. Now, once we have that name there, it really doesn't matter what we call it. We want to create a list of users. And of course, in a normal world, in a regular situation, you would want to collect your first name, last name, the email address, and of course, the password of such users. And you want to collect them in hundreds or even thousands inside of the CSV so that you can then upload them, right? In this case, I have no such names. So I just want to use AI to help me create a very simple list of all of those users. So let's just say create a list of 30 users, including details, first name, last name, email address, and password create a dummy list so the ai knows it's just going to randomize this list so let's click enter let's see what it comes up with well it has some things that we do not need inside of here so we want to say remove last login date and leave the rest of the fields okay now it's confused. I really don't care. I could remove the last login date myself. I'm just getting lazy. Anyways, let's insert that inside of here. And we want to also, I want to come to this table and just revert to unformatted data so that we can have first name, last name, email address, password. We're going to remove subscription status. It really doesn't matter. We don't need such data right inside of here. All we need is this four columns right here. And of course, what we have inside of here is dummy data. I expect that you're going to make use of real data. So let's move right ahead. The next thing we want to do is to make sure that we have this particular list of users downloaded. Let's just download this as a CSV because that's exactly what we need. We want to call this 
new list of users and download that. Now that we have that downloaded, we're ready to make use of it. We're going to come back inside of BitFlows and here we want to listen to response. In other words, we're going to say this URL, which we're going to use as the webhook URL, has nothing currently sent to it, but we want to listen until something is sent to it in the next three minutes or less. Okay, let's do just that. We'll come to the front end and once we drag that inside of here, we want to click on create users. Now, once we click on create users, we're going to have that sent inside of here. We can see the webhook has caught that. We can see it's response captured. This is very good. This is good to go. Now you can see you have a URL inside of here, which is the URL of the CSV file we just uploaded, right? Let's close this and we can move to the next action. What is the next action? Of course, we want to use a CSV tool to break out that CSV and bring in all of the items from that CSV. How do we make use of that? Once we drag that in, we want to click on the pencil icon here. We now want to use a delimiter. Of course, the delimiter is a comma in this case because a CSV is a comma separated values file, right? Good. Now inside of file path URL here, we want to drag in that file path. Of course, we're just going to click on it and we have that file path. We know it is because we can see the sample right inside of here. Okay, good. Now, the next thing we want to do is to ensure that the CSV is formatted correctly. In this case, we recall that the CSV here has a header with first name, last name, email address, and password, right? We want to specify that inside of here, that the CSV does contain headers. So let's just type that inside of there. First name, last name, email address, and password. Let's see that we type that in correctly. We can see first name, last name, email address, password. Okay, that's correct. Now, once our CSV gets our file, we want to click on test run here just to see what it outputs. You can see right inside of here that it outputs a list of all of the data retrieved from that CSV. You see the very first item here, which generally will be labeled zero. The item number one is usually numbered zero. You can see here that the first row Inside of that CSV has first name as first name, last name as last name, email address as email address, and password as password. The next row, you have Alice Smith, Alice Smith at example.com, and pass one to three. Let's go inside of here. You can see that's exactly what we have inside of here. If you open this and just scroll down, you see you have the next one as Bob Johnson. Let's come inside of here. You see Bob Johnson right here. And just like that, you have all of the items collected from the CSV. Once you're done with this, you want to click on close. The next thing you want to do now is to use an iterator tool. And why? Because the CSV is just as an array. It just is an array. And how so? Because it collects the list of all of the items. It's a list basically of other lists, right? Let's look at that. If we click on array, you can see that it collects data of 31 items or 31 rows, right? Make sense? Yes, it does. Because if you come back inside of here, you see the total rows here is 31. And that's correct, including the very first header row. Okay, let's come back inside a bit of the BitFlows edit right here. And this is exactly the array that we want to break out because we want to make use of each of the rows inside of the list of rows, right? And that's what makes it an array. And once you're done putting the iterator, array inside of here we want to click on test run and of course we can see that now it has broken down all our items right here for us we can see first name for the very first row first name last name we can see the next one is alice smith you can see bob johnson and carol williams just as you have inside of here now let's come back inside of here and we want to make sure that under advanced options we want to specify the row that it begins to collect its data from because we don't want it using first name last name email address and password as an actual user right so we're going to specify to it that hey you know what we need you to start from this number of rows to begin to create the users and normally the first item is zero right 
But inside of BitFlows, right inside of here where you have the iterator tool, they've kind of modified that a bit to ensure that you don't get confused. They're saying, if the first item is zero, we're going to call the first item one, right? So technically speaking, the first item here is item number one in the iteration start. So we're going to say that it should start from item number two, which inside of our array here is going to start from Alice, which is showing here as item number one. Once we're done with that, we want to click on close or maybe test run just to test things out. Test run successful. Let's click on close. Our next step is to create the list of users. Quite simply, we're going to click on the plus and type inside of here, WordPress. We have a WordPress action. We click on that and we have create new user. Once we click on create new user, we can see now that we can make use of that iteration action to map the items to the correct fields. Let's do that. First of all, we're going to say what role are we going to specify for all of these users? We'll say subscriber is fine. Do we want to send email notification to both the admin and the user or to the admin or to the user? It's our choice here, but let's just select user. And that's way all of the users will get notified by email of their user account creation. Now, the next step is to map the fields. We have email field, which is compulsory. We're going to come to value here and we want to map that using the iterator tool. Keep in mind, not the CSV here. For the iterator tool, it's going to iterate, as the name implies, over all of the rows inside of the CSV. But what you have inside of here under the tool CSV is each of the items for you to make use of. Let's select the email address, which we're going to put inside of there. For the username, we're just going to select again the email address. The email address is the username is completely fine. We want to add another field here for the first name. And here we want to select again first name. And we'll add another field for the last name. And we're just going to select last name right here. And then select the last name inside of here. Do we want to generate passwords automatically? We certainly can do that, but we can toggle that off and map this to a password field if we so desire. That's what I choose to do here instead of generating a strong password. Either way, once we're done with all of this, we want to click on test run. And what will that do? That will go ahead and create just one of these items. And keep in mind, it's not going to follow our previous rule inside of our iterator to skip the first item. It's just going to go ahead and create what the first item is on the list, which of course is first name, last name, and so on. So let's just refresh our list of users and see what we have here. Refresh. You see here that you have an email address, first name, last name. It doesn't really make any sense. So let's just delete that. We just know for sure that that's working, right? That's what we wanted to ascertain that this was working. So once we're done, let's click on close and we're done creating our flow right here. What we want to do now, let's just click on back and see if this is toggled on. Of course, bulk create users is active and we can test this out right away. Let's go to the front end to test things out. We're just going to drag in that new list of users and we want to click on create users. Let's see what happens now. We click on create users. We see here it says user created. We're ready to test things out. We remember, first of all, that we have all five users inside of here. We have zero subscribers, but three administrators and two contributors. Let's try to refresh this and see if we have a list of all of our users created. Yes, we do. We have 35 new users or 30 new users rather, and all of them are subscribers. If, if you click on subscriber, you see all of the users right inside of here. And of course, you don't see a user called first name, last name, email address, or password as you did before. Of course, it's not there because we specify that it should skip the first item and start from the second. And here you have a list of all of your 30 users created with the click of a button. Okay. This was awesome. Don't you think so? I'd like you to do one thing for me. Hit the subscribe button if you've not already done so and click the like button to tell YouTube you really do like this content. And if you want to see more content like this, you do well to share with your friends. The show will remind you when a new video comes out next time. And I hope you do just that. I only showed you the tip of the very tip of the tip of the iceberg for what BitFlows is capable of doing. You do your best to explore this tool 
Let me know what you find in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and also leave a comment telling me you absolutely did enjoy it. My name is Toby Salami and as always, my dear people, I'm signing out now. Stay dynamic.